Heavenly Father, as I watched WWE in 2015, it seems as though you have forsaken me, that you have chosen to punish me, and I ask you why? Why? I am the true believer. Damn it all! I even make only daughters in your name. Why hast thou forsaken me? I am your prophet. I am your Messiah for the YWC and the WWE Universe. Do you doubt my belief? Do you doubt my devotion and love for you? How can I get back into your good graces? How can I make 2016 better? How can I once again become your prophet? I think I know. I know how to get it right with God. It's time to recite the Lord's Prayer. Bow your heads if you will. Hopefully all of you know the words, but if not, your effort will be most appreciated. Heavenly Father, which art in Titan Towers, ugh. Hallowed be the game, ugh. Thy kingdom come, ugh. Thy title shot will be done, ugh. On earth, as it is in a WWE ring, ugh. Give us this day our daily bread, ugh. And forgive us our trespasses, ugh. As we forgive those who root for Seamus, ugh. And lead us not into sination, ugh. But deliver us from the evil Roman Empire, ugh. For the Royal Rumble will be the kingdom, ugh. Of the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. Amen. I hope God heard my prayer. And I hope you understand that I am here to deliver you from evil. I am here to show you the light. And help you to understand the power and the glory of the kingdom of God. Ugh. Now it's a new year. And there's always a hope. For a new WWE. And I hope that this will be the beginning of a new and better year for OTRS Central. So I don't know about you. It's time to kick off things in a big way. Hop on the good foot and do the bad thing. Let's go ahead and talk about this week's Raw. You would think with this being the first Raw of 2016, the WWE would go all in as much as they possibly could and have all types of big names involved in the show. But I'm actually happy that they didn't go all in. They're saving Brock Lesnar to next week, which was a good decision. And no John Cena. Hey, you know, this is not just to sit there and hate on John Cena, but I was stunned that he wasn't on the first Raw of 2016. I guess they wanted to keep the emphasis on Roman Reigns and then Vince McMahon and then what ultimately matters the most, which we'll touch on later. But, you know, it's good when John Cena's not on TV every week because the weeks that he's not there, it's a welcome break. And the weeks that now he will be on TV, it will be a welcome change. It'll actually be like, even if you're not happy that he's on Raw, it doesn't aggravate you and it doesn't bug you and it doesn't annoy you nearly as much as it used to. And at this point in time, that's a fucking victory and a half. Something else that was really striking about this show was just how not into it the San Antonio crowd was. I mean, they were so dead, they were almost Dino Bravo dead. And that's really damn dead. Bang, bang, I assure you. I don't know that the show was that bad. It wasn't great. I don't think it was that bad. Maybe we shouldn't have any big shows in San Antonio for a while because that crowd absolutely sucked. All right, so now let's actually talk about what happened on this week's show. In a rematch on TV crazy environment that is WWE today, I'm not surprised at all to see Kevin Owens and Neville wrestle again this week after what happened last week. But it's okay because at least there was a little bit of story as to why this match happened. You got much more match this time. The right guy goes over in this circumstance. And obviously this is being used again as a device to try and build up between Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose. I just find it kind of interesting that they're going in as much as they are on this match 
at the Royal Rumble because when you look at it, you think that with the lack of quality or top heels that they have, they've got to have something big or special planned for Kevin Owens. Do you really want to continue going down this path with Dean Ambrose? Because if he beats Dean Ambrose and wins the belt, is the person that he's going to face off with at WrestleMania really needing to be wrestling the Intercontinental Champion? And then on the flip side of this, if he loses to Dean Ambrose, that doesn't do a whole lot to build up Kevin Owens before his whatever big match he's going to have at WrestleMania, whether that be Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, what have you. I mean, the story's not bad. These guys could probably have a pretty good match at the Royal Rumble. I'm just wondering what this is supposed to accomplish, and I wonder what the end game really is here. You know, maybe my prayers are being heard. Maybe my prayers are being answered. Because apparently the WWE has the same philosophy that I do. Dolph Ziggler could just fuck off and go away. They had him lose to Heath Slater. <laughs> the match was bad and fucking sloppy. And they had him lose to Heath Slater so that way they could launch <laughs> this Job Squad 6.0 social outcast group. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, former multiple-time world champion and intercontinental champion, Money in the Bank winner, <laughs> lost to Heath Slater. <laughs> Fuck you, Dolph. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that schlag daddy. What a jackass. I tell you something. This guy and his anti-Dolph Ziggler bias is uncalled for and rudimentary ridiculousness, if I've ever seen it. This guy thinks he's so damn funny ripping on one of the best wrestlers in the world today. I mean, he goes out there and does the super kick as a tribute to Shawn Michaels. How can you not like the guy? He sells like nobody's business. Even Bret Hart would be proud of it, giving him a minimum of 4 out of 10 rating, I swear to God. You know, I miss when this show used to have class. I miss when this show used to have people you could respect. They didn't try to go off the reservation and be funny, but they just told it like it was. They were buttoned down, straight nuts and bolts. I miss Mr. Rout, damn it. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've had enough of the Shred Daddy shenanigans once and for all. How dare he rip on Dolph Ziggler? How dare he? But that's okay. Because it's not about how you start the year. It's all about how you finish all these reports about AJ Styles and the Bullet Club coming to WWE. Oh my god. Uh, 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 I, I, could, I couldn't even make it through Wrestle Kingdom 10 on Rewind without splooge. AJ Styles, he's going to be there. He's going to be at the Royal Rumble. By God, he's going to win the Royal Rumble. And he's going to become the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And then, the night after the Royal Rumble, who's AJ Styles going to face? What's he here to do? It's AJ Styles. It's the Bullet Club. We're running roughshod all over the WWE. And then, wouldn't you know, I don't know where it comes. Yes! 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 It's Daniel Bryan! Oh my god, the American Dragon Bryan Danielson! He's back! He's back! It's gonna be him versus AJ Styles in a best out of nine falls three hour Iron Man match at WrestleMania 32 for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship because these two are two of the best motherfucker wrestlers in the world! Ah. Holy shit! Titus O'Neil! I'm raw! That's outstanding! Like, I legitimately marked out for it. You know, he's an entertaining dude. Now, I know he might never be a top guy, but my God, he could really breathe some life in the WWE's mid-card. The people like him, and they want even more reasons to like him. So why not go with him a little bit and really stick with it and see what happens? Because we can get down with Titus O'Neil. <laughs> Now, frankly, when it comes to the Divas division in this horseshit Divas Revolution crap, I could care less. The shit is the same old lame-ass Divas division, and we just give them a few more crappy minutes in the ring. That's it. But instead of sitting here 
and talking about how stupid Becky Lynch looks or how stupid Ric Flair with a pussy looks. Every time she does something big or something happens, it looks like she's about to ball her eyes out. You know, I'll wait until WrestleMania time and hope that this company comes to their senses. Sasha Banks versus Charlotte for the Divas title, and it's not even fucking about that. Let's make it a family affair. You got Ric Flair in Charlotte's corner. You bring in Snoop in Sasha's corner. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is must-see television, and that is a WrestleMania moment. But in the meantime, until this company decides to actually give us a WrestleMania moment involving this stupid Divas division, I just want to do something else completely unrelated. I've got the Star Wars bug. I went to go see The Force Awakens, so I decided, what the hell? I'm going to have myself a random-ass lightsaber fight versus this review. Why? Because I fucking can. So Emo Kylo Ren thinks he's the one to bring balance to the Force and continue the work of the Emperor. Well, I assure you this. Not on my watch, you emo bitch. Prepare to die. I'm going to send you to the depths of hell of Jakku. Eat my lightsaber. This one's for Han, motherfucker. Ah, fuck. Now, there wasn't a lot to like about the WWE in 2015, but one of the few redeeming qualities for the product was the New Day. You know, my hat's off to these guys. They got a gimmick that I don't particularly like, and they managed to get it over. They got it over in a big way, which speaks to the talents of the individuals in the group. And I hope that means that this group of guys is going to continue to get a big push as a unit, and then hopefully someday split off separately as well, because they deserve it. They're one of the few reasons to actually give a damn about the product. They at least seem to care, and they're trying to make something good out of nothing. Now, what I don't like, though, is when you have them involved in six-man tags that involves them going over the Dudleys on a Raw. It's just, it's not a good utilization of the Dudleys, and frankly, I don't think it's a good utilization of the New Day either. The better utilization of the New Day came a little bit earlier with a surprise. What was that surprise? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two. That time, baby. The sexy beast is back, baby. I need a payout, baby. Woo! Chris Jericho is back in the WWE. And it's time to party like it's 1999. Just like he did. He even cited a segment from his debut promo back in August of 1999. Apparently, he decided to rock a vest that he wore back in 1999. The lights are always a good touch, but I can do it better, baby. You might like doing your Bon Jovi haircut, but even that, Chris Jericho, I can do better, baby. The Ayatollah of Rock and Roller has now entered the Royal Rumble match, which he will not win, and then he will go on to job to somebody else in a lower mid-card match at WrestleMania 32. Feel the burn, baby! The sexy beast, Chris Jericho, lying hurt himself, Father Christmas, he's back, baby! Oh, man. It feels good to be back, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, after a long extended hiatus, the Dick Stone, baby, has come back to OTRS Central. Now, some of you may be wondering, Where's the Dick Stone gone, baby? Well, with James Stone kind of being in limbo, you know, his long-lost cousin, the Dick Stone, baby, I decided to take a little bit of a vacation. And the Dick Stone thinks that he deserved that vacation. But I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines. It's time for me to come back and come back with a vengeance. And speaking of vengeance, I see this clown, Bray Wyatt, and the Wyatt family. And they sitting there talking about how they're going to take over the Royal Rumble. You know what they need? In just the Dick Storm's opinion, baby, as I shoot the truth through my one-eyed monster of justice. They need a grade-A cowboy ass-kicking from the cowboy James Storm. But since James Storm ain't here at the moment, he decided to go with the next best thing. That's me, baby, the Dick Storm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
Braun Strowman, Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, and Bray Wyatt, and give them a cowboy style ass whooping myself as Dick Storm has decided, baby, to put his name in the hat for the 2016 WWE World Rumble. Woo! Ride the Dick Storm, baby. It feels good to be back. And I know y'all happy to see it. Now where the hell did Cowboy James Stone at? Better not take his ass back to TNA. And then we get to the main event of Raw. And the one thing that this show was all about. And I assure you again, as it has been the past few weeks, those are not one and the same thing. The most important thing about this show was not the main event. It was something else. But more on that in a moment. So Sheamus versus Roman Reigns for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship with Mr. McMahon as the special guest referee. You know, I was wondering why they went with this match here and what the hook was going to be. Was it just going to be a big setup and everybody was going to beat the hell out of Roman Reigns and there was going to be no title match? Or were we going to go with a title match and actually have Sheamus win it back and try to extend a story there and get even more balls deep into the Mr. McMahon-Roman Reigns uh, animus? Were we going to sit there and have Roman Reigns actually overcome the odds and win the belt? Were we going to do something else where there was a big long match, but there was no finish technically at all because something else happened? I mean, I have to say I was a little bit intrigued. I was a little bit interested because I wanted to see where the WWE was going to go with this. I just wish they would have maybe slow played the Mr. McMahon stuff a little bit as the referee. Maybe not went all in so quickly and immediately because then it made me think as the match is going on. If he's going to these lengths, then why even take a chance? You're the boss. Nobody's going to tell you no. Have everybody run out and beat the shit out of Roman Reigns and then pin him your fucking self and become the champion your damn self. Or have Sheamus do it. Whatever the fuck the case might be. But anyways, you know, the match was more about Vince McMahon and what Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon, was doing to try and screw over Roman Reigns. But lo and behold, wouldn't you know, Roman Reigns overcomes the odds. And that's it. And I'm like, wow. There's got to be something more here. Because otherwise, this was a colossal waste of fucking time. What the hell did you set up here? What the hell did you accomplish here? Why have any obstacles... For Roman Reigns, when he just blows through all of them, he now truly becomes the John Cena 2.0, where instead of overcoming obstacles, he becomes the obstacle himself, and the villains become the good guys because they're the ones with the challenges and the barriers, and they can't overcome this badass. It's like, in a way, it's like history repeating itself. I'm like, no, there's got to be something more here. There's got to be some other type of hook. This is not the way this show is going to end. And it wasn't. We get the announcement that at the Royal Rumble, the belt's going to be on the line in the Royal Rumble match. Now, maybe some of you don't like this, but I've been advocating for this for a while. Now, granted, part of my advocation was about keeping the belt vacant until the Royal Rumble, but I ask you this. What's so bad about this? They haven't done this in 24 damn years. You want to talk about doing things different, being creative. Here's an example of it. I'm going to applaud the WWE for this. And it's not just because I think it was my idea and my idea alone and my ego expects, demands, and commands all of the credit and the glory for this booking decision, even though I do deserve it. The bottom line is, is it's something different. And based off of where they were at from a storyline standpoint, this was the only real option they had to go with. Because if you have somebody else win the Rumble, but Reigns defends his belt at the Rumble and holds it until WrestleMania, it's just not as good. You know, if you have Roman Reigns lose the belt at the Rumble in a regular match and somebody else win the Rumble match, or you have Roman Reigns lose the belt but win the Rumble match, then you get to WrestleMania and it's like, what the fuck's the point? Now, you've actually got yourself a potential setup, a potential hook here for both the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania 32 because there are a few different options. There's no guarantee of where this company could go. And there are three real options in terms of who they could have win that Royal Rumble match and become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And I don't know if any of those three options are Roman Reigns. Number one, they made a big deal about Brock Lesnar coming back next week. Maybe he's the guy. The audience would like it. The crowd would, I think, get behind it. And if you want to go back to Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns again at WrestleMania 32, 
That match would probably deliver just like it did at 31, although at the end of the day, I don't want to see a repeat Mania main event for the second year in a row. So I don't know how feasible that option is. You've got option two. And you know what? If they're going to do it, just get it done and fucking over with. They can accomplish multiple things here if they have John Cena win this goddamn Royal Rumble and win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Number one, he could tie Austin with three Royal Rumble wins for the most ever. Number two... He could tie Ric Flair with 16 world title wins. And how appropriate that would be that 24 years after Ric Flair won his first WWF world title at the 1992 Royal Rumble match, John Cena in 2016 could equal Ric Flair's world title record by winning it in the same fashion that Ric Flair won his first one 24 years before. Could you imagine the possibilities? Hashtag LOL Cena wins. Hashtag Breakfast Club rules, bitches. Hashtag Jort Johnson power. Could you imagine? Kevin Dunn's like, oh, Vince's, how magnificent and splendiferous a story. And Vince is like, you know, I couldn't have done it any better myself. That's the way to go. The audience today, they still want John Cena. And he wants to do movies in the Today Show. We're going to remind him that he's our property. And we're going to saddle him with the belt, whether or not he even wants it, whether or not the people want it. Because I'm Vince McMahon, damn it. And that's another option. That's a very feasible, very realistic option. Well, there's another option. And it proves the power of prayer, people. I know some of you are non-believers still. And some of you are atheists. Some of you don't want to buy in to the glory and the power of God. But there is one other possibility. And my prayers have been answered! As it has been the past few weeks, as I have so eloquently stated to you and laid out the path of divinity for all of you to see whether you choose to accept it or not. God's plan is His plan! Whether you want to realize it or not, or whether you agree with it or not, it is not for you to accept or agree with. It is for you to go with and to understand and ultimately, yes, embrace. Where all the past few weeks has been about one thing. Just like TLC was about one thing. Survivor Series, about one thing. And that is, of course, Triple H's WrestleMania the majesty and the splendor of this heavenly body. The fact that this company believes so much in giving him a WrestleMania main event that they are utilizing the Mr. McMahon character to make that happen. All the while, Triple H is nowhere to be seen on TV every single week. Praise God! Can you imagine Triple H saying, not so fast, Cena. I've got 13 of these fucking wins. I'm going to the Royal Rumble. Screw Roman Reigns. I'm winning the title to become a 14-time world champion. And I'm going to go on to WrestleMania to defend that title against The Rock. I'm the man that will main event that show. I'm the man that that show is going to be built around Uga. The genius of this. Now you've set the table perfectly. For Triple H to go in and win the 2016 Royal Rumble and go on to either A, defend that title against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 32, or even bigger, against The Rock at WrestleMania 32. For those of you that don't believe in the power of prayer, I hope you see the ill of your ways. Don the Hunter, the Hurst, and the Helmsley. All I can say is, praise God! I need more of this in 2016. It wasn't a perfect show, but when it came down to nut cutting time, and the only thing that really mattered, the WWE delivered, and oh boy, did they deliver in a big way for me. Ugh. Oh